Hi, I'm going to show you how to use the SimSip R package to make a forest plot. This example script that I'm working from, which will be posted online, will show you one, how to run the SimSip simulator from R. This is not going to have extensive examples. We have other e-learning videos that will go into more depth, but I'll show you some really basic examples from workspaces that are already set up. Two, I'm going to show you how to extract the necessary data from, for forest plots from the results from running those simulations. And then three, I'm going to show you how to use those data to actually make a forest plot. For housekeeping, we're going to call on a few different packages from our library. So first, obviously, we're going to call on the SimSip package. Additionally, we're going to use the RSQLite package, Tidyverse, PKNCA, and then just for keeping track of how long the different simulations take, and this is optional, I like the package TikTok. So we're going to use TikTok as well for keeping track of times. And just a note, you will need to have the SimSip simulator open in order to simulate. I'm using version 23 here. Uh, and then I'm going to make a note of what my working directory is, and I'm just going to set it to where my script location is, because that's where I've got my workspaces stored. So let's start by simulating. So first, I'm going to set my working directory to that path that I just set a moment ago. And next, the very first thing that you are going to do when you're using the SimSit package is you'll need to initialize the simulator. So even if you're not simulating, you're just getting data out of those database files, this is the first thing that you'll need to do. So we are a company that is based in the UK. So uh, please, if you're from the US, please do note that we are using the British spelling of initialize. So we'll run that and we'll get a helpful message down in the console saying, yep, you have initialized version 23. You are ready to go. So I have set this up where I've actually already run the script beforehand just to make sure that I have data that's ready to extract to make into forest plots. Um, so I've already saved my data. And so I've set up this example so that if you are in that position where you've already run the simulations in the past um, and you saved your data, you can just load it. But because I promised that I would show you how to run the simulator um, in R, we will, I'm going to skip this part for now. And I'm just going to show you, I'm going to go through one iteration of how to do simulations in R. So we have five drug-drug interaction simulations, and we want to run those and then store the results. And very specifically, the results we are interested in are the AUC and Cmax ratios. Those are the data we're going to use for the forest plot. So first, I'm just going to get the workspace names that I've got. So if I look at what that object was, I'm just showing what what files are in my working directory with that pattern for the WKSC. So here are my five workspaces that I'm going to be um, simulating. I'm going to make a few lists, uh, just a couple of lists to store the data. And then this is the start of my loop. I'm not actually going to run it in its entirety, though. So instead, I'm just going to set this to the very first item in that, in, in that little character vector of files that I've got. So here's what each iteration is doing. First, it's going to know what the time is, what the start time is for that iteration. Next, it's going to set what the workspace is uh, to simulate. And this is really useful to check out. So if you look down on the console after I said um, that I wanted to set that workspace, it's automatically going to give me a summary of some of the main aspects of that model. So please do check this. Um, uh, it's very handy to just make sure that you are simulating what you think you're simulating. So um, I want to save the results to a database file, and I want that database file to exactly match the name of my workspace file, um, just with a different file extension. So I'm going to set that. So you can see I've got that same simulation, just with that it, it ends in .db. And next, I'm going to simulate. All right, now that that simulation has finished running, the first thing we're going to do is make a connection with the database file. This is using our SQLite, so we'll make a connection. And then the next thing we will do will be to extract the um, different statistics that we want um, using this function, get forest data underscore db. So this is going to be using a confidence interval of 0.1, an alpha of 0.1, so that's the 90% confidence interval. For percentiles, we're going to be looking for the 5th to 95th percentiles. This is just saying where we're going to get the data. It's from this particular database connection. And then the last dose, this is true 
true because we have um, all of these are multiple dose simulations. So we want to look at the PK at steady state. And the AUC type is AUCT just because um, we're looking for AUCT uh, uh, for that specific time interval and not extrapolating to infinity. So we will run this and we'll get some forest data. And then the um, second to last thing that iteration will do is it'll note the time. Um, down here you can see how long that took to run. Um, this is really just kind of more for your information than anything else. And then it will disconnect from that database. So that's what every iteration is going to do. Um, and, and then once it's gone through all the iterations, it's going to put all of the forest data into a single forest data. Uh, forest, um, it's going to put all of the data into a single data frame. Um, note the time and it's going to save the data. So like I said, I've already done this. So you don't have to wait while we run all these simulations. So this file does exist. So we're going to go ahead and load it. And you'll see that we've got um, our data over here. So if I click on that just to take a look at it, we've now got all of the different simulations that we're interested in. Um, you'll see that we've got these PK parameters, AUC and CMAX ratios, and then a bunch of different summary statistics. So if we want to include observed data in our forest plot for comparing with the simulated, um, we certainly can do that. We're going to have to set it up in the same uh, kind of format that the simulated forest data are set up as. So let's take a look at what it looks like. So um, here are the columns that are the most important for us to include in the observed data. Number one, um, the file. So that would be just the simulation file name. You'll notice that it does not include the file extension. So we'll have a column for the file without the file extension. Then <clears throat> the PK parameter that you want. So that's this column right here. Uh, once again, it's just AUCT underscore ratio or CMAX underscore ratio. And we're going to need it to be set up just exactly like that. And then um, you can include whatever summary statistics you want, but we're going to be making a forest plot you, that's kind of the most standard forest plot that you'll see. And so we're going to be um, graphing the geometric means. And then at least for our simulated data, we're also going to um, be graphing the geometric confidence interval, 90% confidence interval. Uh, for our observed data, we're just going to include the geometric means though. So that just means that we'll have a point with no error bars, which is totally fine. So we're going to add this other column, geo mean, um, to match our simulated data geomean. So here is the data frame that I've got all set up. So we've got the simulation file name. That's just explaining which observed data we should match with which simulation, um, what the PK parameters are, and then what the actual values are for each um, of those uh, observations. So if we look at that object, um, you can see we've got the simulation file name, PK parameter, and then we're just showing the geometric mean. All right. So coming back over here, last step is we're going to actually make the forest plot. Please do check out the help file. We um, added a, a number of descriptions about a, a bunch of different options for arguments to make your forest plot look exactly the way that you want. For now, we're going to start with what I would consider to be basically a draft forest plot. So we're going to use mostly the default parameters. Um, we've obviously provided um, the forest data that we just uh, extracted. And then we're going to add this optional bit. We're going to include some observe, the observed data that we just described. So we'll run that and we will get our draft forest plot. All right. So um, just to walk you through what this plot is showing. On the x-axis, we have the geometric mean ratio and the confidence interval. Um, this is an, a this is a log transformed x-axis, and that is just to make sure that your inhibition um, is as large in scale as any induction. This happens to just only be looking at inhibition, but if you had induction data on here, they would be equal in scale. You can see that the y-axis is broken up primarily by the simulation and then secondarily by what PK parameter it is. And then we have points on the actual graph um, indicating um, for, for the simulated and the observed. Um, by default, this doesn't include a legend, but I'm gonna show you how to add that in just a moment. And, um, and then we have shading that indicates the severity of the drug-drug interaction. So one of the first things I wanna make better is I would really like the Y axis labels to not 
just be labeled according to the kind of cryptic file name that I chose for the simulations. And so I'm going to make a character vector um, to specify exactly what I want the y-axis labels to be. So this character, it's going to be a named character vector, and the names uh, in the vector will be the actual simulation, and that will be the simulation exactly as it's listed in forest data and also in the, our observed data. But it's not going to include a file extension. And this is just, then the value itself is just what we want to actually show up on the y-axis. Um, you'll notice that I've got a couple of backslash n that just means a uh, carriage return so you can include carriage returns in your data so we'll run that and now we have this object y-axis labels ready to go and we can include that um, with the argument y-axis column you can alternately specify a column within your forest data that you want to use for making nice labels um, so if this were just part of the data frame we could include it that way too so let's plot the revised forest plot um, with nicer labels. And there we go. So much nicer looking than just our file names. Um, much uh, easier to figure out what's what. All right. So there are a number of ways that you can customize your forest plot. And we really hope that you'll play around with the function a bit and also take a look at the help file to try to see what the different options are. But here are just a few options just to give you some examples of things that you can do. So we're going to start with what we've already done. We've got our simulated and our observed data. We've um, made these pretty y-axis labels. Um, this is actually the de default settings, but you can specify exactly what mean type and variability type you want. There are some different options listed in the help file that I encourage you to check out. And rather than using a grayscale over here, I'm going to use one of the default um, or one of the built-in color sets. Uh, I would like uh, for my DDI, um, the shading on this graph to go from yellow to red as, it, as the intensity of the DDI increases. Also by default, plot for us CDI, that function will um, start with the strongest inhibitors up here and it will go down to the strongest inducers on the bottom. That's the default order. It's ordering it by the AUC ratio. Um, but you don't have to do it in that order. Instead, you can set up the simulations in whatever order you want in your source data. And then you can say that you want the y-axis order to be just as is. I'm going to tweak the x-axis table title just a little bit. I'm going to make this just be 90% CI rather than that confidence interval. And then since I've only got inhibitors here, and really they're only really only weak inhibit, negligible or weak inhibitors, I'm going to kind of narrow down that, that x-axis range so that it's just focused on my actual data. So I'm going to set that with x-axis limits. I'm going to add a graph title and specify exactly what size I want that title to be. And I'm also going to add a legend. By default, if you say legend position, position equals none, that is the default value for this argument, that means that you will not get a legend. So I'm going to add a legend on the right and any of the kind of typical legend positions, top, right, bottom, left, all of those will work. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save my graph. And uh, I do encourage you to fiddle around with the um, specific dimensions just to make sure that everything is nice and clear and kind of not smooshed together. Um, and I'm going to save it as a PNG file, but really any of the kind of most typical um, graphical uh, file extensions will work. If you are a user of ggplot2, um, that's really what is making this graph behind the scenes. So anything that would work with the package ggplot2 will also work here. So if we run that, we will have our pretty forest plot, which is now showing um, scales. Um, uh, the shading for the DDI intensity is from yellow to red. And there's a legend on the side that will indicate that. The legend will also indicate what shape is for observed and what shape is for predicted. And if we look at the final graphical file, um, this is what it looks like. Then the last thing that we want to do just to end everything is we're going to uninitialize the SimSip engine and all of our data are saved. So the next time we run this, we won't need to re-simulate anything, um, but you can tinker with your forest plot however you like. So there you go. That is how to make a forest plot using the SimSip R package. So thank you for your time.